me and a student for Viva. I ask, what is limbic system? Can you describe limbic system? The student says, after some thought, uh, sir, the limbic system is uh, in animals, they walk on their four limbs and uh, humans walk on the hind limbs or two limbs. That's the limbic system. Wow. Fantastic. Amazing. Hilarious. Um, thank you very much. Goodbye. I do get such answers once a while. Uh, hilarious answers or um, amazing answers. There was one such answer on the limbic system. Probably the student wanted to connect it with limbs. So I thought uh, make a uh, thought of making a video for first year students for how what you should uh, write if it's a five mark short note. So here is the limbic system. First of all, um, limbic system limbus means a ring, and therefore this term the limbic system is applied to the parts of the cortical and subcortical structures. So there will be cortical structures and some subcortical nuclei which form a ring around the brain brain stem rather ring around the brain stem yeah so limbic actually does not mean the limbs as in four limbs hind limbs limbic or limbus means a ring all right and here is a system which consists of some cortical structures and some subcortical nuclei which form a ring around the brain stem. That's how the word originates limbic system. And the first thing that should come to your mind uh, when you talk of limbic system is emotions. Emotions and behavioral responses. That's the core of the limbic system. With that in mind, now let us proceed further Whenever there is a short note on this limbic system, five marks or seven marks note, uh, first you should uh, write an introduction, then the structures involved in the limbic system, uh, uh, the part of the limbic system that is, and then functions of the limbic system, and finally maybe the applied physiology. These four headings uh, under which you will answer this particular note. All right, so the limbic system. Uh, this is the introduction of course the first part that you should write limbic system consists of the limbic lobe or the limbic cortex and the related subcortical nuclei as i have already mentioned now uh, basically limbic cortex would include or even before that let me just explain to you uh, about the cortex our cortex has got two parts phylogenetically the newer one is called as neocortex and this neocortex forms 90% uh, of our cortex. It includes all those uh, frontal lobe, motor cortex, parietal lobe, uh, sensory cortex, temporal lobe, auditory cortex and uh, occipital lobe, visual cortex and all these uh, cortices, primary, secondary, etc. So that's 90% part which is called as neocortex and the 10% remaining part is called as allocortex phylogenetically older so allocortex and that comprises of the limbic system so you may remember like this 10 percent cortex is uh, made up of the limbic system and it's called as or referred to as allocortex all right now the structures structures uh, that's the second part of your answer limbic cortex includes cingulate gyrus Yes, uh, cingulate gyrus, not cingulated, uh, uh, cingulate gyrus, isthmus, hippocampal gyrus and uncus. Uh, let me add one more point here. There is no unanimity uh, among the authors as to which structures should be included in the limbic system. So what I have done is taken the most common structures which are included by everybody. Okay, so... Uh, what are the cortical structures here? Limbic cortex includes cingulate gyrus, isthmus, hippocampal gyrus and uncus. Four structures. And the related subcortical nuclei, amygdala. Remember, most one of the most important parts. Amygdala, which is a group of nuclei on the tip of the temporal lobe. Okay limbic uh, lobe structures are associated with the temporal lobe uh, uh, limbic system structures closely associated with the temporal lobe uh, septal nuclei 
एंड ऑफ कोर्स इजी टू रिमेंबर हाइपोथैलामस हाइपोथैलामिक न्यूक्लिया एंड द एंटीरियर थैलामिक न्यूक्लिया सो हाइपोथैलामस थैलामस अनदर इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट टू बी हाईलाइटेड हाइपोथैलामस फॉर्म्स द वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट ऑफ द लिम्बिक सिस्टम क्रूशल क्रिटिकल पार्ट ऑलमोस्ट वी कैन से सेंट्रली लोकेटेड और सेंट्रल रोल बींग प्लेड इज दैट ऑफ द हाइपोथैलामस एज वी विल सी लेटर बट इज दैट क्लियर नाउ द कॉर्टिकल स्ट्रक्चर्स आर सिंगुलेट गायरस इस्तमस हिप्पो कैंपल गायरस एंड अनकस एंड रिलेटेड सब कॉर्टिकल न्यूक्लिया कलेक्शन ऑफ नर्व सेल्स तो दैट विल इंक्लूड अमिगडला हाइपोथैलामस थैलामस ऑल राइट नाउ जस्ट एन एडिशनल पॉइंट हियर लिम्बिक सिस्टम वॉज फॉर्मरली कॉल्ड एज राइन एन सेफेलॉन राइनोज यू नो दैट राइनोज मीन्स नोज और ऑल फैक्ट्री सेंस सो बिकॉज इट्स रिलेशन टू द ऑल फैक्शन स्मेल येस इट इज क्लोजली रिलेटेड टू द ऑल फैक्ट्री सेंस द लिम्बिक सिस्टम एंड द ऑल फैक्ट्री सेंस आर क्लोजली रिलेटेड बट दैट्स ओनली अ स्मॉल पार्ट ऑफ द लिम्बिक सिस्टम फंक्शन so uh, previously called as rhinencephalon at additional point the limbic cortex phylogenetically the oldest part of the cerebral cortex and uh, referred to as the allocortex which i have already mentioned let's look look at the structures in detail and their connections so uh, okay you can see here it's making a limbus or a ring around the brain stem structures uh some what goes like this like a ring so it will have cingulate gyrus over here cingulate gyrus then thalamus here then hypothalamus amygdala a small portion and hippocampus so these are the important main structures of the limbic system uh or let's have a better diagrammatic view better diagrammatic presentation of these structures cingulate gyrus then nucleus accumbens a very small area we will see its function later anterior thalamic nuclei septum and then of course beneath the, the thalamus uh, below the thalamus there is a uh, hypothalamus alongside it is the hippocampus so remember nucleus accumbens anterior thalamic nuclei septum hypothalamus hippocampus then beneath that the dentate gyrus and amygdala these four names will be uh, crucial for your answer uh, amygdala hypothalamus anterior thalamic nuclei cingulate gyrus and then the other structures like para hippocampal gyrus uh, and uh, close by is the orbito frontal cortex so this diagram will be useful for your exam answer in the exam now let's see the uh, important connections and functions so limbic system represents the primary area for the control of autonomic functions like heart rate like blood pressure like gi movements etc how it happens is that hypothalamus is the highest seat of control uh for the ans ans function has got its control in the hypothalamus and hypothalamus is extensively connected with the limbic uh, system structures hypothalamus itself is a part and it has got connections with the other structures of the limbic system so emotions controlled by the limbic system connected with the hypothalamus and hypothalamus controls the ans ans in turn will control all these heart rate gi movements blood pressure etc that is how emotions have the influence on our heart function and other functions all right um now amygdala amygdala is the emotional window remember uh, this particular phrase amygdala is the emotional window through which a person sees the external world yes you will find uh, two people reacting very differently uh, emotion wise 
टू ए सेम सिनारियो और सेम सिचुएशन दैट्स बिकॉज ऑफ देयर फंक्शनिंग ऑफ द अमिक डला डिफर्स फ्रॉम ईच अदर सो इट्स द इमोशनल विंडो थ्रू विच ए पर्सन सीज द एक्सटर्नल वर्ल्ड एंड इट इज नोन टू रेगुलेट इमोशनल बिहेवियर ऑफ एन इंडिविजुअल द इमोशंस ऑफ रेज एंड फियर आर एलिसिटेड ऑन स्टिमुलेशन ऑफ द लिम्बिक सिस्टम पर्टिकुलरली द अमिक डला सो वी आर we have seen uh, something about hypothalamus we have talked about the amygdala emotional window an important phrase then limbic system plays an important role in the motivational drive of an individual some people are highly motivated some people lack motivation uh, so this all depends on the limbic system uh, the drive that emotional drive depends on the functioning of the limbic system and it is also concerned with olfaction now uh just a, a quick additional information we uh there suppose there is common cold we are suffering from common cold and there is loss of smell we can't smell the things you might have observed that we also can't feel the taste have you experienced this uh in common cold associated with fever or something there is no smell that's fine the nose is choked or blocked uh, congestion of the nose so there is no olfactory sense but then uh, you also can't feel the taste there is nothing wrong with the taste pathway why can't you appreciate the taste remember this that uh, sense of olfaction first of all all the sensory signals they have to pass through the thalamus to reach the cortex right olfactory sense does not go through the thalamus so it's quite separate from the other sensations including taste is there any place where smell and taste meet in the cns yes there are two places two locations where smell gives a collateral olfactory sense olfactory pathway gives a collateral to excite the sense of taste uh, or potentiate the uh, sense of taste one is in the amygdala and the other one is the insular cortex so uh, olfactory sense will give the collateral and potentiate the sense of taste uh, especially at these two places which i mentioned and therefore if there is loss of smell loss of olfaction then this potentiation also will not be present and the person will not be able to appreciate the taste sensation all right then hippocampus yes we all know that the hippocampus is the seat for long term memory all right seat for the long term memory hippocampus converts working memory into the long term memory so we have seen the important structures and the functions uh, performed by them starting with hypothalamus hypothalamus uh, controls the ans and hypothalamus connected with the limbic system parts other parts other than the hypothalamus so uh emotions having some bearing on the ans function is via the hypothalamus and thereby controlling the heart rate blood pressure gi movements amygdala emotional window through which a person sees the external world um then hippocampus long term memory the seat of long term memory all right now uh james pape is the neuroanatomist he gave the uh, emotional basis of the human behavior why do humans behave in a certain way in certain situations what's the emotional basis that emotional basis was given by james papes the neuroanatomist and he gave a circuit which is called as papes circuit so that's also to be included in the discussion on limbic system i hope it is visible okay now prefrontal cortex has connections with the limbic system frontal lobe motor cortex and in front of it most anterior in the cerebrum is the prefrontal cortex so it's connected with the cingulate gyrus a part of the limbic system then hippocampus hippocampus where uh, the memory long term memory will be stored then the mammillary bodies hypothalamus hypothalamus to thalamus anterior thalamic nuclei 
which is uh, the connection is called as MMT uh, mammulothalamic tract. Uh, so mammillary bodies to anterior thalamic nuclei and thalamus back to the cingulate gyrus. So this circuit uh, establishes the emotional basis of our behavioral responses. How do we behave? Uh, what are the external manifestations of our emotions? All that is given by this circuit. Just remember it once, once again, have a look at it, prefrontal cortex to cingulate gyrus, to and fro connection. So uh, whatever uh, information is there in the prefrontal cortex upon a daily basis, of course, that information given to the cingulate gyrus and it goes through the circuit of the limbic system. So cingulate gyrus, hippocampus, mammillary bodies, that's hypothalamus and from there to the anterior thalamic nuclei back to the cingulate gyrus. All right, that's the Pape circuit. All right, finally, let's see the role of, or before that, uh, there is just one part that we have missed out. So let's, uh, let me just uh, describe that also. Nucleus accumbens, nucleus accumbens. We saw it's a part of the limbic system. Uh, it has got dopaminergic neurons, very densely populated dopaminergic neurons. And you know the dopamine is a neurotransmitter associated with uh, reward, reward and pleasure, okay, addictive behavior. So nucleus accumbens is associated with the reward, pleasure and addictive behavior in humans. So just that one more function to be added in your note. Finally, the role of hypothalamus. Uh, see how central role is played by the hypothalamus. The non-hypothalamic parts of the limbic system receive information from the cortical association areas, prefrontal cortex as we saw. So uh, cortical association areas will send the signals to the non-hypothalamic parts of the limbic system, cingulate gyrus, etc. From there, the signals will be sent to the hypothalamus and from the hypothalamus, uh, control of ANS will be executed. So, the emotional meaning of the external stimuli, uh, information gathered from the memory and understanding is passed on to the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus then integrates, look, the emotional stimuli, uh, various situations that a human will face, all those things will be first going to the cortex, from cortex to the limbic system structures and there to the hypothalamus. Now hypothalamus will integrate all this uh, to elicit endocrine, autonomic and some other activities so that uh, there will be an external manifestation of the emotions. So you know already there is a, a, a known fact that hypothalamus controls the master endocrine gland and thereby it controls the endocrine function of the body. And it also is the seat of uh, ANS control. So heart rate increasing or uh, if there is fight and flight, there is a release of catecholamines. All this will be initiated by the hypothalamus upon receiving the external emotional stimuli. So uh, that's the function of the hypothalamus. These all things you may write in the, uh, in the short note. Finally, applied aspect, you know, uh, clinical application of all of this. Degeneration of neurons in the limbic system will uh, kind of lower your emotional responses. So uh, there may be dementia, Alzheimer's disease, if there is degeneration of neurons uh, in the limbic system or anterograde amnesia with the lesion of hippocampus, uh, loss of smell and taste in the case of uh, lesions of the uh, lesions of the other structures in the limbic system. So uh, that is the clinical application or uh, things that are happening with the lesions of the limbic system. So this in a nutshell is the limbic system as the answer you can write in the exam. Certainly you will get full marks after writing this much.